party's candidate for the US pre presidential election. A state-by-state -state vote at the party's convention in Ohio confirmed that Mr Trump had the support of the majority of delegates. He will formally accept the nomination in a speech tomorrow, as our North America correspondent James Cook reports from Cleveland. Scotland is investigating whether one of the men fell from a window. Stephen Duff reports. Hyde Park turned violent last night. Another officer... The cost of childcare during the summer holidays is unaffordable for many families, according to the Family and Child Care Trust. ...that roads, railways, hospitals and power supplies are still at risk from floods. That's according to a government review. Uh, BBC News has... Did you know that Britain has lost more than 70% of its cuckoos in the last 25 years? But tiny tracking devices fitted to some of those birds have maybe solved the mystery behind their decline. Yes, a study... It's 12 minutes past eight. Good morning. You're watching uh, Breakfast from BBC News. And Theresa May faces her biggest parliamentary test later when she takes to the dispatch box for her first Prime Minister's questions. Yes, we'll be talking to Sean Kemp, former senior advisor to Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg, about what to expect from Theresa May in a moment and also how she might be preparing. First, uh, here's a reminder of how her predecessor approached Prime Minister's questions. And in appearances at Prime Minister's Questions, he joins us from our London newsroom. Morning to you. I imagine it's quite a daunting task, isn't it, to stand there as Prime Minister? How much pre preparation is put into all of, or any of the questions before they go in? Preparation as well means they are across so many different things that perhaps they might not be otherwise. Um, uh, tell us also about you know the, the jokes and, and sort of being amusing in this. In this day of 24-hour news, is that also important and does that have too much importance? May, obviously, it's her first um, time she'll be doing this today. Uh, what would your advice be, I suppose? Thank you very much. Former advisor to Nick Clegg, thank you for your time. Always good advice to be yourself, isn't it? It's, it's best because then, yes, <laughs> it's more difficult, to, less difficult to muck it up. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Nine. Oh, you managed to map that. Yep. <laughs> 19, See, they know that. <laughs> Nineteen minutes past eight. You're watching Breakfast and BBC News. A reminder of our main stories this morning: the triathletes, haven't you? Yes, kind of obviously. I guess where Nag has been. Yeah, golfer. Yeah. Charlie Hull. Charlie, Charlie Hull. And uh, Charlie. Charlie has also been out with the women's sevens team, rugby sevens as well. And yeah. you have been BMXing. I have, yes, because Team GB's Liam Phillips became the first man to claim back-to-back -back BMX Supercross World Cup titles, and now he's thinking all about the Rio Games. Um, I, I'm. I'm glad that we've solved this because when we say Dan on a BMX bike, it has certain sort of images and we can see them. But importantly, <laughs> I should point out that when I went to go and do this, I wasn't aware that I would be actually on Does the bike. Does that explain your shoes? Yes. <laughs> Have a look. Look. And people well. are trusted now. Yeah. Mm. I find the way that you write fascinating because I, I always expect I've never written a novel but I expect that if I if I was to do it, I'd have to have a really structured plan. But mm -hmm. you sort of start with a page and then the story takes you. Almost no idea what will happen eventually? Almost no idea. I mean, you know, I know so... Which means on the, the negative side, I can write myself into a corner sometimes. <laughs> do, you, do you sometimes? It happens. Yeah, Does it? It happens. Yeah. When do you know you've reached the corner? <laughs> when you can't think what to say next. Oh, so how far do you go back? It is about, as I said, sort of um, things that have been in the news, including uh, grooming, for example, and historical um, abuse cases as well. Um, how much have you looked at news to that? Also, do you look at, you know, have you do you speak to police about how they've dealt and, and changed with the way they deal with cases? Yeah, I mean, I read a number of books and, and, and I speak to police. Uh...
you know, it's... Well, I mean, they, they give you a real page turner, and, and I think in, in a way, even though the endings can be a little... It, um, are, you con are you concerned by, by it at all? Or... I mean, mm. do you see what I mean? It's, 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 some of it's uncomfortable reading, actually. Well, it, it, it can... At the moment, obviously, you've taken a bit of a break to, to promote the book. And break? Come on, I never take break a break. break. <laughs> right. uh, yes, you yes. You part I'm... the book up the next book. Can you tell us much about what's happening? Or do you, maybe you don't know, because <laughs> it's developing as we speak. And the music is over. Oh, what a day it was yesterday. Beautiful sunshine for most of the UK. It was hot as well, wasn't it? The hottest day of the year so far. Some areas even got to 33 degrees oh Celsius. Goodness. Hotter than where? Spain, Thailand, we always do this, don't we? And Hawaii. <laughs> uh, today might not be as warm for everyone. Uh, sunshine's expected to sh turn to showers and thunderstorms, but we are going to just rewind a bit and bask for a few moments in the memories of the mini heat wave. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Of, of the children playing in that swimming pool, Carol. It's been really glorious there this morning. Enjoy the rest of the day there, Carol. Looks like everybody else will too. Lovely, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. See you later. She's got a job, hasn't she, Carol? <laughs> I just want to be there. <laughs> yeah. You get that point, didn't you? Since six o'clock this morning. Uh, now, the potential implications of the UK's decision to leave the EU are likely to be felt right across the country, but the referendum result could mean the greatest changes for Northern Ireland. Residents are used to crossing the Irish border, but no one is quite sure what will happen once the Brexit process is complete. Our Ireland correspondent Chris Buckler reports from two neighbouring towns on both sides of the border.